All right, guys. Sorry I didn't get no filming done yesterday. We ended up with 10 or 11 muskrats, a few raccoons, some possums. We've got a pretty good pile of raccoon in the truck right now off our road line. Camera around. I've stopped at three stops, and there's six or seven rats there. This is just, it's a tea steak set, just like you would for a raccoon. Right there's one pan of the trap. There's the other pan. A little bit of Billingsley's rat bastard on there. Or bat rastered, however he does it. Still got a few more. On to the next. Alright guys. Got a 150 muskrat on this crossover going over this island. On to the next. Hey guys. Just wanted to show you. You can see that prop back there in the water. It ain't but three inches under. This mud motor makes things so much easier out here but yet there's still places that we have to walk like from here to that island unless it rains raised an inch or two i don't know i'll probably have to walk it i'll do a little video of running the mud motor when i can get out to where i can run it and actually go instead of just sitting in one spot and plowing through this stuff this really, really cuts up these lily pads. I figured it'd plug it up. It don't. I've only had to clean it out twice for all the stuff I've been chopping. That's pretty good. On to the next. Got a nice little pile of rats started. Ain't been out here but 30, 40 minutes. Already got about as many as yesterday. Dale's over there. He had the boat. He's checking all them huts. On to the next. All right, guys. I'm only in about six inches of water. This thing don't like to turn very well trying to record. It's going. On to the next. Hey, we're out in the fur shed skinning, scraping. Well, Dale's skinning, I'm scraping. We'll show you guys a little trick on these tails. Hopefully I can show you. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. Take a sharp fillet knife. You will lob a few tails every now and again. And just roll that fat on up. And then when you're scraping it, you don't have to push on the tail and take a chance of popping it off. And second of all, you wouldn't believe the amount of fur that I get in the shop that don't have the tail scraped at all. And then people wonder why their stuff slips. Well, you gotta get all that fat off to dry it right. Skunks, they're, no, they're another one that uh, people don't get the fat off. Right here, I'm just cutting out the window. This is the board, go above the pee hole. Go down the sides. Don't throw the stuff on the floor this year. It gets kind of messy in here. Alright, now we're going to scrape a couple. I start clear at the nose because right by the ears you got these two pockets of meat and fat and these coon don't scrape very easy like uh, one you got out of a freezer 
frozen coon scrape way better in my book. Huh, Dale? Oh yeah, by far. The colder you can get them, the better. And if you can freeze them for a day or two and then thaw them out, they'll scrape so much better. I agree. Fresh coon don't scrape, fresh fur, period. Doesn't matter what it is. Fresh uh -huh. fur doesn't scrape very nice at all. There ain't much here, but guys, you gotta get them clean. You just gotta hit the sides a little bit and you're done. Watch out for teats. <laughs> Watch out for the teats. <laughs> you, hook, you hook one, you'll know it. You'll, oh, yeah. You'll pop a hole. Very easy to do, very common to do. You get in the rhythm, just. You'll hit like three or four boars in a row and you'll be going long pan. There's your sow. I like the one with the, the big nipples on them. They really blow out good for you. Top of that leg, pull it up to the leg. I cut them leg holes a little big. If you keep them smaller, it helps hold it up there and won't rip out on you. Another big teat, not a big one. It's not a titty sow by no means. Just some of them got bigger nipples than others, Dad. <laughs> That's right. Flip her on over. Like I said, I start clear up here about where the nose and the eyes are. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but you can get the point. I'll show you the hide when I'm done. And on the next one, I'll show you what most people scrape them as that I receive in the shop a lot. About what, Rammy Jammy, about got me a tea. Yes, you did. Saw that right off. <laughs> What we end up with? 14 rats? 14 rats and 10 coon. 14 rats and 10 coon. We're going to go string a bunch of steel tomorrow. We went and did a little scouting after we ran today. That line we got out don't take us very long at all. The only thing that does is the muskrats in the boat. Takes us, what, hour, hour, 20 minutes to run Maybe them? Maybe at the most. And I'll show you guys these on a stretcher. I just haven't gotten them down yet. Go clear above that. From, from there to there, there's a piece of cartilage that comes out. And there's a big old strip of meat. And you don't have to cut it. It pushes right off these raccoons. Now, if you're doing them for the fur market, that's not necessary. But right. if you're sending them off to be tanned, it is very necessary. Very necessary. Because we can't guarantee that if you leave that on there. We can't guarantee much anyways because of the way the process is before we get it. Like, I just had some black bears come in the shop. And both of them slipped. One guy salted his, but 
Man, when they got four inches of fat on them, that salt ain't gonna do nothing. And you drive from Canada or up north and don't switch the ice out. This is a grisly one, buddy. Yeah. And make sure to pull that hide up tight. Anywhere that hide rolls or wrinkles and you come over with a knife, I can almost almost guarantee you you're gonna pop a hole. Yep. So the tighter you keep it, the more straight down the beam you work, the better off you are. Don't want to get over on the sides of the beam because that's really thin right there and there's not much cushion and that knife will, it will tear off. Don't do what I do like I'm doing right here. Yeah, do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> But in my defense, I know these beams like my kids. Actually, guys, don't let him lie. That's only the second coon he's ever straight. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> don't lie. It's the third this year. Oh, yeah. It's the third one this year. <clears throat> Not bad for a kid. Not bad for a rookie. I don't think I've put quite as much up as you in my lifetime, but God, I've spent many, many nights in the fur shed. But you catching me. Yeah, you slowed down the last few years. I have. Old bastard. Ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. It's your story. Tell it how you want. <laughs> it's kind of nice out here putting up fur except for the sweat. Yeah. Shouldn't be sweating during trapping season. I take that back and then we head south when it gets cold here. under that front leg. Ain't much there, but it's really soft. And just take her easy. Then we're gonna borax these and hang them up. That borax is another lifesaver for you guys. I always spin that leg around so it goes down with the beam. I get a little too aggressive sometimes you'll blow this son of a gun clean out.
that's it guys i'll get a couple put on the stretchers and show you them as well all right sprinkle that open this tail up i'm very generous with it Rub it in. I don't worry about getting it all over the table until the last one. Knock my clothes pin off. What that borax does guys is number one it pulls the moisture out of that leather and number two it'll help set that hair number three it will keep the bugs off of them yep do not use salt don't think you can get by using salt because it won't if you if you do and try to sell these on the market they will dock you bad borax they'll never say a word about I just like it for the fact that it keeps the bugs off. We used that in Arkansas. It was... That switched me over. Flip these legs, make sure you got all around them. That's it, guys. Without the borax, show you what the coon looked like. I'm kind of surprised. They're not real bad. That's slate-ish. For first week coon, they don't look too bad. Uh-uh. Usually they're bluer than an ace of spades. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.